Let's break it down. Now, most doctors aren't required to study nutrition because it's simply not a board certified specialty. They come out of medical school without an in-depth knowledge of the true causes of most metabolic conditions and the true root cause of insulin resistance, which is the central node to most chronic disease. And insulin resistance influences almost every chronic disease that you can think of. So in effect, doctors recommend what they're recommended. Now you can see on the screen here that insulin resistance is the central node that touches many different chronic diseases, including in the top right quadrant, all of the flavors of diabetes, including type 1, 1 1.5, prediabetes, type 2, and gestational diabetes. In addition to that, insulin resistance also increases your risk for other cardiovascular conditions like coronary artery disease, hypertension, atherosclerosis, and high cholesterol. In addition to that, people who develop more insulin resistance increase their risk for the development of many different types of cancer, as well as obesity, fatty liver disease, and Alzheimer's disease. Women who are living with PCOS, who are born with PCOS, end up becoming insulin resistant and they are often prescribed metformin and other medications to lower their blood glucose. And finally, in the top left quadrant, insulin resistance increases your risk for the development of quote unquote, inevitable consequences of diabetes, including neuropathy, blindness, kidney failure, retinopathy, and erectile dysfunction. And even though doctors like to claim that these are inevitable consequences of living with diabetes, the truth is that they're not. They're inevitable consequences of living with a nutrient poor diet and poor lifestyle choices. Now here's where the massive lobbying of the healthcare and pharma industry come into play, okay? They're constantly rubbing shoulders with doctors, recommending them particular types of drugs to prescribe. And doctors who don't know, trust the institutional recommendations and they just prescribe a quick pill because that's what they were told to do. Now a huge part of this is that people and doctors and marketers and salesmen are all looking for a quick pill and for easy solutions. They wanna package this, this health into a pill and give it to you because that requires you to do the least amount of effort. And most people want to think that we live in a world where you can just take a pill and that's the answer. So subconsciously, we want to think that we can change lifestyle diseases, but we don't want to change our lifestyle. And that's where things can get hairy. The result is a flow chart like the one that you see here. Okay. The first line of therapy is metformin and then lifestyle, but then everything else is pretty much about drugs. And this is how doctors are taught to think. It's never about changing your diet and integrating intermittent fasting and moving your body more. And if so, they might give you some general recommendation like, oh, well, it's about diet and lifestyle. But that doesn't really mean anything because diet and lifestyle are massive universes and you have to get into specifics if you're going to promote any kind of real change. This is missing something massive. What it's missing is something called real food. It's missing things like moving your body. It's missing intermittent fasting. It's missing changing your mindset. It's missing lifestyle change. And lifestyle change is the single most powerful medication ever discovered by human beings that has effectively no side effects. The side effect is that you have to try. The side effect is that you have to put in some effort. And if you're willing to do that, it will pay you back a thousandfold. Okay. This news doesn't come packaged in a pill, but it will save your life. It's all about what you eat, how you exercise, and the decisions that you make around when to eat. It's going to require a seismic shift of your mental frame. It's hard to hear this. I understand because it can be overwhelming. But if you are prepared to make a seismic shift in your mentality by taking small steps over the course of time, okay, you can get rid of this idea that a quick pill solution is going to solve your problems. Instead, I want to give you the power. You don't have to pay anybody. You don't have to rely on anybody. All you have to do is rely on yourself. Now, the most consistent proven way is what's called the Mastering Diabetes Method. It's called a low-fat, plant-based, whole food diet. It's called exercising for 30 minutes per day. And it's called intermittent fasting, doing that either daily or weekly. These three changes are based off of hundreds of years of research. We wrote about it in our book that is cited by more than 800 scientific studies. And we guarantee your success if you follow the method. It doesn't require increasing your use of medications. In fact, it does the opposite. It lowers your use of medication and you can go to your doctor and they can help you de-prescribe medications. And if you're still skeptical, listen to this. Now, a landmark study to investigate the efficacy of metformin was published in 2002 in the New England Journal of Medicine. In this study, researchers studied 3,234 non-diabetic individuals with an elevated fasting blood glucose and randomized them 
to either a lifestyle modification program or 850 milligrams of metformin twice per day. Those in the lifestyle modification group were told to lose 7% of their body weight and exercise for a minimum of 150 minutes per week, which is roughly equivalent to five days of 30 minutes of exercise per day. Now you can see the effect of both lifestyle change and metformin on fasting blood glucose. The lifestyle change group is in black and the metformin group is in white. Lifestyle change created a measurable decrease in fasting blood glucose at six months in comparison with metformin. And that persisted throughout the entire duration of the study. In addition, lifestyle change reduced A1C more than metformin at all time points with the exception of the four-year time point. They followed these participants for 2.8 years and concluded that lifestyle intervention reduced the incidence of type 2 diabetes by 58%, whereas metformin reduced the incidence of type 2 diabetes by only 31%. That means that after rigorous statistical analysis, the researchers found that lifestyle change is about twice as effective as metformin. Now, that's a big difference and teaches you one thing very clearly less medication and more lifestyle change is better. So why doesn't anybody know this? Well, the truth is that people do, and we're working hard to spread the word so that all of those 120 million people around the world who are given metformin as their first line of defense to lower their blood glucose will have the opportunity to know that while metformin can certainly be helpful in certain situations, it is not a long-term solution. And lifestyle change is easy, it's free, and it's available to you at every moment of every day. This video was just a snippet of a much more in-depth discussion. Click on the link on the screen to check out the full-length episode. Now, the science behind health is overly complicated, unfortunately, but getting healthy doesn't have to be. Visit masteringdiabetes.org start. Answer some questions about yourself, and schedule a free consultation to talk with somebody on our team who's gonna show you exactly how we've transformed the lives of thousands of people using the Mastering Diabetes Method. We have a limited number of spots available, and that's why it's imperative to find a good fit. Again, visit masteringdiabetes.org start to schedule a free zero commitment discovery call and start taking control of your health today.